This video is sponsored by Hostinger. If you've ever wondered how you can get your personal website up and running within a few clicks, well, Hostinger has you covered. By accessing their easy to understand hosting panel, you can import a website you've developed on DM1 with a code editor like VS Code. Just simply provide a zip folder containing your assets and with one click, import your website. Once it's successful, you can already go ahead and visit your uploaded website. But to make sure you are protected and secured, one click will allow you to install Cloudflare as well as an SSL certificate to increase your website's credibility and SEO ranking. Don't forget to use Andros off at checkout for an additional discount. And if you happen to need a hosting provider for your personal website, by using the link down below, you will be supporting the channel. And this is why I keep hosting her within my Chrome bookmarks. Most often try to find the perfect apps to enhance our lives. Whether that's web apps, Chrome extensions, and even desktop apps, we all have the need to be more productive and efficient with our work. As a former computer science student and full-time content creator, I finally happened to find some awesome coding, productivity, and editing apps that allows my life to come together. And so with the help of the M1 MacBook, I decided to share with you most of the apps that allows my work to become alive. An awesome app that was introduced to my life this year is called Todoist. Todoist is a quick task manager app that allows you to schedule your life extremely easily. You can add a task, name it, give it a day and time which will auto complete as well as give it a priority if needed. I happen to have labels to better organize my tasks for the week as well as projects depending on the brand I'm working with for the month. You can always add a project to your task by using the hashtag which allows you to keep everything organized and neat. And if you happen to have major tasks that need to be broken down into subtasks, well, Todoist allows you to do so. You can even leave comments within any task you wish to do so and set reminders but do keep in mind you need the pro plan for it. Along with Todoist, I use Notion to complement my project management. You can use Notion to organize, structure, and track your life extremely well. And because it's available on desktop and mobile devices, it truly allows you to stay connected everywhere. I happen to have a bit of a complex system within Notion that allows me to properly organize our video projects, give them dates, and relate them to sponsorships if any. And with time, I have learned to embed my Todoist app into Notion within my weekly agenda. But Notion is a very powerful tool which I highly recommend because by creating databases within your pages and tables, you can create a powerful system for yourself or for others to run an entire team and project. You can really do anything like create different types of text, embed images and videos, create to-do lists, add tables, create calendars, and so much more than you can barely imagine. It will allow you to design and create pages exactly the way you want them and get creative with your workflow to avoid using your brain as a storage. But for myself, my storage room doesn't only consist of Notion and Todoist. In fact, I use the Note apps a lot. For those who follow me on Instagram, you guys know I tend to write a lot within my captions. At the beginning, I was doing this through the Instagram app, but then I figured a better way to use notes in the computer for this. The Mac doesn't only allow me to type faster, but also format things the way I want, whether that's by adding spaces or emojis if needed. You can also create small to-do lists, add tables, and embed images and documents, lock your notes, and share them if needed. Sharing them is how I brainstorm ideas collectively with my partners for my Canvas company. Oh, and also, with notes, I can have everything in sync to the cloud in case I change devices, and it allows yourself to invite people to collaborate within a single note. You can also create folders if you would like to divide your notes into sections, but it's something I don't do much because of Notion. And because English is not my native language, I recently started using Grammarly to correct my captions. With Grammarly, you can solve your grammar and spelling issues extremely well. You can use the assistant to give you an overall score of how your text performs and receive feedback from it. Whether it's the correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery, it truly allows you to develop your writing skills for a better message. You can also get fancy and format text within the editor, and that includes simple things like letter formatting, embedding links, 
using bullet points and you can even clear all of the formatting if needed. I do wish I had started using this a couple of months ago when I had to write a 2500 word essay because it would have made my plagiarism check a lot quicker. But now that I'm done school, I can truly allow myself to dive deeper into Lightroom and Photoshop. Lightroom and Photoshop on the M1 run like a charm. These two apps allow me to create a lot of the static content you see within the videos and 80% of my content on Instagram. If you happen to have a camera that produces raw images, you can simply use a USB-C adapter to transfer your pictures, import them on Lightroom and start tweaking them. With Lightroom, you can truly modify the look of the pictures, but not its content. I do have my own Lightroom preset I use for my pictures if you're interested in that. But if you want to start cleaning up things and making them look neater, Photoshop is the go-to. By right-clicking on your Lightroom image, you can open it on Photoshop and start playing with it. I personally use tools like the Spot Healing Brush to remove unwanted stuff, the Clone Stamp tool to arrange details, and the Pen tool to make selections and use other advanced features of the app. But with the help of Photoshop, you can drag and drop figures as well as create them and remove things within your pictures to very much tweak them. And because exporting these pictures is extremely quick, I always allow myself to use the airdrop feature to send them to my phone for an Instagram post later on. But Adobe apps do produce junk files you don't need from editing. So I use Clean My Mac to get rid of pretty much any junk files. With Clean My Mac, you can quickly find and delete system junk, which will help you free up some space and make your laptop even faster. You can also use its optimization tool to remove startup apps, small satellite apps running in the background, and fix hung applications. They also have a pretty awesome feature called Space Lens, which will scan your files to show you the biggest folders you have so you can start rearranging things and freeing up space. I personally enjoy using their uninstaller because it allows you to make sure an app is uninstalled and removed along with some of its leftover files. And while I run any sort of maintenance within Clean My Mac, I tend to listen to some music on Spotify. I personally use Spotify for desktop and it's my go-to for music and podcasts. It does tend to crash from time to time and it's quite a bit slow when I watch Joe Rogan's podcast, but I think that's due to the fact that it runs on Rosetta 2. It's to be continued. With Spotify connected to Discord, everyone pretty much knows what I'm up to there. Discord is my main communications app and pretty much my holy grail when it comes to schoolwork and teamwork. With Discord, you can create a chat server, create different channels, and orchestrate your communication the way you want it to. It's mainly used for gamers, but I really like how simple it is when it comes to assigning roles, using custom bots to maintain the chat, hop on quick calls and share your screen, as well as adding cool custom emojis to your server. There are plenty of interesting Discord servers out there that I highly invite you to check out, but I've been mainly using it to talk code. When I put myself on Do Not Disturb and write VS Code is because I am on VS Code. VS Code is my editor of choice when it comes to web development. Creating folders and files is extremely easy. With VS Code, you can allow yourself to open up a workspace treat it as a repository and use the integrated terminal to install any tools and access your version control when needed. On top of that, I love how awesome it is for global search, search within files, and search any file within your project. And because of its extensions, you can allow yourself to install multiple tools such as Prettier to format your code, Bracket Pair to colorize your match brackets, ES7 React to use shortcuts to generate boiler code, and even a live server when you're developing with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is how I pretty much allow myself to make websites and upload them to hosting make sure you check them in the link below. On top of VS Code, I usually use Postman to make any API calls when I'm developing a backend in JavaScript, use Mongo Compass if I'm using MongoDB as my database, and whenever I feel like developing mobile apps, I use Xcode which is the code editor for iOS apps using Swift. And because I'm a web developer, well, I love copy pasting code with Chrome. Chrome is not only awesome for its extensions, but it has a really cool developer tools for web developers, a really nice way to synchronize all of your browser data 
data within your account and a simple way to keep track of your bookmarks. If you ever happen to change devices, with the help of your Google account, Chrome will automatically synchronize all of your data, including your extensions and themes to be installed on your new device. And as far as extensions, I do have a few secret ingredients. For starters, I heavily recommend you check out Dashlane to manage your personal passwords and billing information. With Dashlane, you can easily carry your information on all devices as it is extremely secured as they use AES-256 encryption, but I heavily recommend it because it is such a great password manager that is safe, free and easy to use. Aside from Dashlane, if you are a tech freak and you want to try to get the best discounts possible as well as get notified when tech is in stock, I use Karma for that. With Karma, you can go to almost any website, add items to your list, and you can choose the type of notification you receive for that item. On top of that, in some stores, you will have the freedom to scan for some coupons, and if you are lucky enough, you can definitely save some money for the items you're about to purchase. And with Identity, you can also truly simplify your browser to organize your web life. Identity allows you to organize your favorite websites in one place and navigate the web with a few clicks. It also integrates that Ashling to add your credentials to your tiles with a secure password management, favorite a tile to bring it to the top, filter them, and even add notes on the side for your web browsing. And yes, it does have dark mode. As for Zoom, this is the app I use when Discord can't handle HD calls and need to do some pair programming with my team. Sometimes I do have sponsored calls through it, but I don't use it extensively as my priority application for communication. By downloading backup in sync, I am sure to have my Windows PC and my MacBook in sync when it comes to sharing files within the devices. I rarely have the need to go on the Google Drive web app as I mainly use Backup and Sync through Finder or Explorer when I need files. But if I ever need to share content with other people, I always hop on the web app and share links when needed. Google Drive really allows my workflow to increase exponentially and pretty much act as a universal airdrop for myself. But the M1 MacBook story doesn't end here. If you haven't checked out my M1 MacBook Air video, I'll leave a link in the description down below. I've been using this machine extensively and with these apps, it has been an absolute monster of a laptop for work. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and allows you to explore some of these apps to enhance your work in life. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. So if you guys really binge watch my videos, you sort of know they sort of follow each other up. And I'm about to show you what I'm going to be doing with all the parts I had for my other PC. There you go, how to cable manage your PC.